try to do the line itself. Oh, no, no. So, my friend, I want to learn seven minutes. What? Yes. And it is so nice. I feel more, you know what I mean? Yeah. Also, I think yeah. in the back of my mind, I would be a little bit worried. Like, what if I stand up? You know, it just feels better to be yeah. a tire. But not with tire. Or yeah. that. Yeah. Someone come to the house. Yeah. I think I had a shirt and a jacket. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> Uh oh, neck problem? No, I think we're live. Oh, we are recording. So just <coughs> my eye. Yeah. And it's 801, and we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. Good morning, everyone. Hello. Uh, welcome to all of you that are online um, and all of you that are in person. So bear with us today. Uh, this is our first time doing it in several years and we've never done it both online and in person. So hopefully everything will be okay. Everybody can hear us okay. So my name is Tracy Irby and I'm the director here at the Center for Women Entrepreneurs. Uh, again, we're so happy to have everyone here. We had kind of talked it about this earlier. This was supposed to open April 2nd of 2022, or 2020. And as you know, what happened then, the governor was supposed to come. We had a huge grand opening planned and everything just stopped. Uh, so for two years, this room has gone almost unused. Uh, so we're so happy to share it with all of you today. We're so proud of it. We love it here. We love being able to see outside and we're just so happy to have you guys here in person and we're glad to have you guys online as well. One thing we learned during the pandemic is we're gonna always have to have a virtual portion of this. We have reached so many more women in Texas. We have reached people throughout the whole United States. We've had people from Germany, England, Wales, everywhere. So it's like, we will always have that virtual component of this. So the Center for Women Entrepreneurs was funded in 2015 by the state legislature just to help promote women in business anywhere in the state of Texas. And so we do that, our services are free. We do that through small business advising, networking and training events like this, uh, funding, and we do research into uh, women in the workplace, women entrepreneurs, et cetera. We are part of the larger Jane Nelson Institute for Women's Leadership. This whole floor up here is dedicated uh, for that. So if you have a chance, make sure you walk down a little. It's so beautiful in here. We, we can't, we're so excited to share it with everyone. Uh, the Jane Nelson Institute host our center, the Center for Women and Student Leadership, and the Center for Women in Politics and Public Policy. Their fo focus is dedicated to preparing more women to take on successful roles in business and public service. They want to ensure women have the education to establish careers as successful C-suite executives, skills for building entrepreneur entrepreneurial businesses, and framework needed to run for public office. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead. At first, I'd like to introduce our staff here. Uh, online, we have Stephanie Robinson, our small business advisor. There she is. And she is on Zoom and will be taking the questions there, answering anything that you have online there. 
Uh, we also have Barbara Ranke. She is, here's Barbara, and she is online, but she's also going to uh, uh, be monitoring Facebook, Facebook Live. We have Kimberly Nielsen. She is our new, you can come up here for those online. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgot about that part. I'm sorry. She is our statewide program manager and she was out there helping direct people to here today and she'll answer any questions. And then Donna Lisa Skinner we have as well. Uh, she is our program director. So <laughs> I know she's she has worked really hard on this <laughs> to make sure everything went okay today. So briefly, and I mean briefly, we will go around the room. And if you could just say your name and your business, uh, we'd love to hear that. For those of you online, if you want to put your business in your name, well, we'll see your name. If you want to put your business in the chat, we can all see this uh, in here when you do that as well. So we can start with you, Jody. Okay. How about that? I'm Jody Snow. I own Calculate, a bookkeeping company. I am Sherry Trailer. I own Joti Design Tips and Strain for the company. Good morning. My name is Samantha Chapelsall. This is my daughter, Cameron Sall, and we recently started a nonprofit for suicide prevention and mental health awareness. Oh, uh, Marge Atkinson, Ask Marge Research. Alice Huff, we're still working on that part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Amanda Gibson. We have Farmers Gibson Agency out of Sanger. I'm Ashley Lascore. I own uh, Silver Lining Home Care Solutions. We're a personal assistant service agent. We'll start in the back back there. I'm Ann Morgison. I'm a health coach. <laughs> I'm Sarah Rouser. I'm an independent agent for Black. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Hannah Clausen, and I own Well Culture Counseling. We're licensed professional counselors. I'm Cindy Oki, and I started Tribe, which is a Black student support group that supports students with um, mental health concerns, and I'm also a therapist. I'm Shakita Owens. I'm a licensed <laughs> professional counselor and all of abundance of hope counselor. Hi, my name's Malin. I'm a marketing and events planning intern, an independent contractor. I work with other businesses and I'm a business major. <laughs> um, my name is Kenyatta Shorty. I'm <clears throat> featuring these storybooks as personalized children's books, and I do um, independent contracting. I'm Kendra Ford, and I'm Kendra Ford Consultant. I'm Karina Aguirre. I'm a health educator. I'm the student peer uh, advisor here. Uh, I'm the student workers coach here at TW. I am Connie Valenti, and I'm a stylist with Gabby. It's a line of women's clothing that I'm Los Angeles. I am Amber McNeil. I'm the founder of Stop It Court Search, which is a nonprofit, and I do multiple of other jobs. <laughs> Great. Oh, it's nice to see all the different types of businesses that are that are in here. So thank you all for sharing that with us. Um, I'm going to bring Donna Lisa back up here and once she'll go through a little bit of housekeeping. Um, okay, so for questions online, um, you'll um, go ahead and type those in the chat probably to Stephanie and then that way she can grab them and share them with us. Um, I also want to make sure I turn you guys up just a little bit. We turned you down earlier. Um, I think you said 40 was good. All right, perfect. Um, so starting next month um, on the registration, you'll see a couple of different extra questions. One is going to ask you if you're in Texas, um, outside the state of Texas, but inside the United States, or if you're international. Just because now that we're doing these in person, we just really want to be able to see like where we're reaching. Um, and then that way, um, that's good for our records. And then it's good um, just to kind of know where we're, where we're reaching people at. Um, in addition to that, um, one of the things that we're trying to do is marry the online and the in-person. And a lot of times that's a little bit difficult to do, especially as you guys get to stand up and introduce yourselves, but they get to put it in the chat. 
So another question is going to ask you if you are open to having your name, email address, and business shared with everybody that's registered for the event. Um, and we just ask that with that, that is not an opportunity for you to grow your email list. That's just an opportunity for you to connect with other people. We would just ask that you would respect people's privacy and not add them to your email address. But if you see somebody online or in person that you would really like to connect with, we want to be able to give you the tools to do that. Um, and so we'll, we'll, that will be another question. Please, if you do not want yours, you do not feel like you have to do that. Um, it's completely optional. There's not any difference in how things happen for you or anything. Um, we just want to make that opportunity available. And then did you do restrooms? Restrooms are right out here um, in the hall, right across the hall from where we are standing. And with that, um, I'll step back while you introduce and then we'll have to do the screen. Okay. <laughs> well, again, I'm so excited to introduce our speaker today. I caught her one day speaking and thought, oh, she's wonderful and would be perfect for this. Uh, so eating disorder specialist Jessica Setnick is an experienced, excellent expert speaker who presents worldwide to rave reviews, but none of that made a difference in her bank account until she learned to price, pitch, and negotiate for herself. A combination of cheerleader, speaking coach, and best friend who stops you from taking a live mic into the restroom <laughs> Jessica shares her, her strategies for getting and giving maximum value in her book, A Dietitian's Guide to Professional Speaking, expert advice for pitching, presenting, and getting paid, and through her websites, dietitianspeakingguide.com and dietitianspeakers.com. I know this will be so great for everyone, and so Jessica, I'm so excited you're here today. Let's welcome Jessica. Thank you for the lovely introduction. Thank you for hosting me. Oh, do you need to? I'm going to, if you keep talking, I'll flip over here and show you. Okay, thank you. I am so excited to be here. And also, I need all the services of all the entrepreneurs. I'm not a woman of color and I'm not a single parent, but there's literally nothing that went down the line that I didn't think I, I want to know that person. Like, what interesting women we have here, and that there may be. Um, anyone else of any other gender identity online, I don't know. Um, but this is absolutely de delightful to be here. Thank you so much. And I hope that um, this is the beginning. This today is the beginning of spreading your amazing messages out there into the world, the world that obviously needs your message. And by the way, this is Tabby. Okay. <laughs> so I literally have a connection with every single person and everyone. Who's the person that helps people who do coaching businesses? I need that person's help. I think there was someone who was a money manager. I'm sure I need that person's help. So uh, we're all staying connected after this. I love it. And I wish I had more time to meet each and every one of you. My suicide prevention colleagues here, I mean, such needed work. I'll tell you the story afterwards of how I have a suicide prevention sign in my yard. It says, don't give up, you matter. You know what? I'm telling everyone the story. It says, don't give up on one side and you matter on the other side. And it's gotten dirty and dingy and I've replaced it three times. One time it got stolen. I figured someone needed it more than me, but I keep replacing it. And I probably wouldn't have replaced it after that first time just because why? Except that I get so many cards and letters and notes written on bed maps stuck in my mailbox and dear neighbors, I won't say my address, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> letters. And this is the, the story I was going to tell you is that one day, and you're not even going to believe this, okay? But there's a woman, and actually she could have been you. She, you guys are probably a carbon copy, like body type and everything. Maybe not the beautiful orange glasses, but she rang my doorbell, total stranger. I opened the door. I guess, I don't know, just seemed like the right thing to do. I'm thinking, wait, I just said I opened the door to a total stranger, but ignore that part of my story. <laughs> and fast forward to the part where she said, I don't usually take this street to work, but I was just doing a cut through. And I was not having a good morning. And I told God, I'm ready to give up. And if you don't want me to give up, you are going to need to show me a sign. And I drove by your house and there's a sign in the yard that said, don't give up. 
and I pulled over to the side of the road and burst into tears and called my best friend. And she said, you know what? Anyone who has that sign in their yard would like to hear from you that it made a difference in your day. And we hugged. This was obviously before COVID. <laughs> but it's a beautiful thing that you're doing. And even though that story was about your specific line of work, everyone here, we have a story in common. And that's what we're here to do today is figure out how each of you can share your story. But everybody needs dollars. And if we lived in a different world, it would be great if we didn't. I would be perfectly happy to just exchange seashells or, you know, barter for goods and services. Um, but we live in a world where we have to have money in order to fund the projects that we're all doing. And so my goal here is to help you take whatever your topic is. And I'm not here to teach you how to be a speaker because that's a different talk for a different day. We can talk about that later. Oh, and I brought a copy of my book for everyone who's here. And I have an opportunity for everyone who's not here to get a copy. So you'll, you'll get all the information on being a better speaker if you're not a good speaker. But I'm going to take from this group that you're, you're there. You're a great speaker, but... It's that those money conversations that are a challenge. And so if this talk spoke to you, if you're here to hear this talk, it's because something about the title, the word money, how to make money from your presentations, even when you speak for free, it's really important to have that ability to spread your message, but also be able to fund your program so you can continue to spread your message. So that's what we're here to talk about today. So I'm going to cover the steps to making the most out of every presentation. I'm a little concerned now that I see that, that the slides are not quite the right size for this screen. So there may be some words cut off. Don't fret. I can always get you a copy of the slides um, that you can download from my website later. We'll do that. So don't fret, don't frown, take notes. But how to get the most out of every presentation, that's really the goal. So I'll use today as an example as we go through, and you'll see how these um, strategies that I'm talking about actually apply to the situation that we're literally here right now. Be so meta, like speaking about speaking about speaking. So, oh, and also let me just say that this is okay this with me to be a conversation. I can't see the chat, but if you have a question, put it in the chat. I feel sure someone is monitoring that and will let me know. And anyone in the room, if you have a question as I go along, please feel free to you can write it down and save it for Q&A time, or you can just ask me as we go, and that would be okay too. So uh, before you ever start talking about money, okay, we're, we're going to imagine a specific situation. And you can imagine a situation you had or a situation you hope to have where you have been asked to speak or you have been asked to pitch yourself to speak, right? So sometimes you're just asked to speak. Could you come talk to my group? Other times you're, you're asked, I hear you do speaking, what do you do? Kind of what can you do for me? I have a group that takes speakers, I want to see if you're a good fit. And often one of the first questions you get is, how much do you charge? I need to know if you're a good fit by how much do you charge? And your very first response is, uh-oh, kind of cut off. Sorry, I'm going to have to be very thin. I'm just going to have to let that go. Perfectionism, goodbye. Is the per word perfect is right there with the word fit. Totally cut in half. And I'm just going to have to let it go. Oh, okay. <clears throat> you have to decide, is this opportunity a perfect fit for you? And it has nothing to do with the money at first. So before the money conversation. So that means if this person says to you, but I need to know how much you charge, you say, tell me about your event because the amount you charge might be different. You have to learn about this. The amount you charge might be enormous. The amount you charge might be nothing. It depends. So you have to find out about the event first. So first you ask, tell me more about your event. And maybe it's a group of Girl Scouts. And maybe it's a presentation at a conference to 10,000 people. And it doesn't matter in the sense that if it's not a good fit for you, it's not a good fit for you. And then money is not even a conversation you'll ever have. If it is a perfect fit for you, if it is a target audience for you, if it is a group that you'd really like to reach, we can go on to the next step. Are you available? Oh, brother, this is going to bug me that these slides, I guess the technology has failed us, but again, I'm living through it. Okay. Are you available? If you're not available on the date that they have, ask, is this an ongoing event? Are there other dates available? Is this a monthly meeting that you have? 
So for example, with this exact presentation, I got the call from Tracy. Would you like to speak to our women's entrepreneur group? Check to perfect fit. That is a great group to talk to about speaking. I am a woman entrepreneur. Why would I not want to lift up other women entrepreneurs? Check, are you available? Well, the date that she suggested was two days after I got back from a week long trip presenting in Alaska. It was not ideal. But I was so excited I said yes. <laughs> so I asked if there were other dates available. I think the later dates in the summer were booked, so it would be all the way till maybe September. I didn't want to wait. So I said yes. So I'm available. So are you available on the date? And if not, is it an ongoing meeting or is it something that they could keep you in mind for next year? But are you available? Because if you're not, it's already not a perfect fit. Does it match your USP? Now, USP in my book stands for unique speaking platform. It's not what my talk is about today, but you will leave here with a copy of my book and can read more about how to create your own. And some of you who were writing your descriptions of your business on the chat, I noticed are probably three quarters of the way to a USP. You just have to add something a little bit specific about speaking in there. And then you've got your unique speaking platform. So once you have your unique speaking platform, does the event match that? Are you a good fit for it? Not in the sense of the opportunity itself, but is this something that you can do a great job at? Because there's no reason to present if you're not going to be able to do a good job. And for example, what would be something that doesn't match your USP? For me, my specialty area in dietetics is eating disorders. If someone asked me to speak on vitamins, even though it was a good fit because it was the Women's Leadership Institute. And I love the idea, but they need a speaker on vitamins. I'm not the right person, right? And so it's a great opportunity and I'm so tempted, but you always really have to check if it matches what you can do because your best advertisement for you presenting next time is how good of a job you do this time. And Tracy saw me present at TW, we're at TWU, mm -hmm. a different room at TWU a few months ago. And that was the best advertisement I could have given to get this presentation. If I had done a crummy job or if they had asked me to speak about vitamins and I did a, a kind of a haphazard job because I don't really know anything about vitamins anymore. I was in school 30 years ago back when these bathrooms were from 1940. And so it was definitely, oh, if you haven't been into the bathroom, please take a visit. They are lovely um, and shocking. I videotaped it for my friends that went to TWU with me. I'm not kidding. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. It has to be a good fit for you. If I had done a crummy job or talked about something I wasn't really good at, Tracy wouldn't have said, wow, well, we have to get this speaker for the Women's Leadership Institute. So be sure that it's a match, even though you're so tempted to say, anyone who wants me to speak, yes, I will do it. Be careful, because doing a bad job follows your reputation, just like doing a good job. So once you have checked those boxes, it's a good opportunity for you, you're available, it's a good match that you can do a good job at, it's time to pitch yourself. Note, we have still not talked about money. Keep that in mind. It's going to be a while. It's going to be hard because the other person might say now, well, that's all great information about my event, but if, you, if the budget doesn't work, then why are we still having this conversation? And you say something like, I feel confident we can make the budget work. You don't actually know, but right now what you are doing is you are painting yourself into the picture of this event. Money talk will come, but right now your job is to paint yourself so integrally into the picture of this event that this event could not go on without you. And there will be a way to make that money work because you are that important to this event. And the way you do that is you describe all your great ideas. You've now gathered information about this event, who the target audience is, right? Because these are the things you needed to ask in order to find out if it was a good fit for you. And so now you have great ideas. Oh, you know what, Tracy, we could record it and then people could watch it later. Tracy, I could bring books to the event and I could give them out to the participants. Oh, and for people who are online, I could give them a discount code so they could get it after the event just for the cost of my, my production and shipping to them. And so we, we can do all the, oh, you know what else? Oh my gosh, and you just have all these bubbly ideas. I have a few ideas for you about all the extra value you can bring to the event besides just your talk. Can you prevent the, pre prevent, 
I just blended two words there, promote an event. If you can promote the event to your fans, that may be very valuable to the group. They may really want to drum up attendance. And you, I just spoke in Alaska, but there were people who attended from all over the country because even though the Alaska group did not have contacts all over the country, they have contacts in Alaska and as well they should, some of my contacts attended their event. So that could be very valuable. Some people actually, the, some event planners, their whole goal is attendance. So budget is no issue if you can bring the fans. Another example would be to live webcast to audiences at other sites. Here at the Leadership Institute, they already had that idea, but some people don't. Some people are just thinking kind of small and they don't think about the idea that you could live webcast to audiences at other sites. If you're speaking to a company that has a multinational staff, the cost of them bringing even one staff person into this country could be less than your whole speaking fee. And so the idea that they could live webcast to other audiences and other locations could be a huge value. Allowing audio or video recording for, for this group to either use in the future or sell in the future. That could be a huge value to them. And it doesn't cost you anything. And the beauty is if it's a professional recording, you may then be able to take that and use clips for your promotions or, or resell the, the recording yourself. It depends on the contract you work out. Another example is to discount your book or your products to the group to resell or to give out. So to say, as you're having this conversation about how great this event sounds and how you're so excited about it and you're thinking, you know what? We could also do this and we could also do this. And you're painting yourself as a major player in this event. You could stay for a book signing afterwards. Oh, you know what? I love to do book signings after my events. I could stay for a book signing. How many people probably do you think are speakers and they dart in and they dart out and they get the next flight home and they're gone. And if you say you'll stay for a book signing and you'll mingle with people, you may wear a mask. A okay, it's the era of COVID. But to stay and give any extra value, if your flight doesn't leave for four hours, why wait at the airport? Spend an extra hour at the venue with your book signing event. Now, granted, you have to have a book to sign, but that's another talk for another day, too. You could attend a private event with VIPs. VIPs love to meet the speakers, right? You could do a meet and greet before, a meet and greet after. I personally am super nervous usually before presentations. Today, I don't know if I was, and I kind of attribute that to Donna Lisa and her excellent organizational planning and skills. She literally, in my instruction, said the parking is far away, wear comfy shoes and bring your presentation shoes in your bag, which I did. But someone who has that much attention to detail, it's really hard to be nervous once you know they have literally covered every base. But if you are like me and typically are nervous before, then you give your VIP event afterwards. And you don't have to host it, you could, but you could get a sponsor to host it. It could cost you nothing. But, but time, and what do you have that's more valuable than your time that you're offering to this organization? Um, Q&A with students, what about that? If you're speaking at a college or if you're speaking at any kind of educational institution, students are the future. And it's so amazing if your students or if these students will be able to get a little pinch of you. When I go to a college and present, I say, keep me busy all day. Technically, you're paying me for that student presentation keynote at night, but I will be busy all day because I arrived the night before, so I'm available. 8 a.m., let's do a training or, or a Q&A with the medical staff at the, at the health center. And then let's do lunch with the peer advisors or the Greek advisors or the anyone. Keep me busy all day. And I love if I can do a class with nutrition students and I don't bring a presentation. I literally sit on a desk and just take questions about what it's like to be a dietitian in the real world. I don't have to prepare at all, but I have provided an enormous value. It may sound a little bit cocky, but that's really what this is about in a sense is not feeling cocky when you describe your value. It's feeling like you're providing value so that then when your fee conversation comes up, it's not shocking at all. Any creative ideas you have, maybe you have some kind of specific branded program that you can provide or a lead behind. I, there's probably a million things that you can do. Could you do a demo of your product? Could you, I mean, anything, anything. Could you do a fashion show of cabby clothes that the proceeds benefit charity? I mean, there's so many ideas. Do not feel limited by my ideas because my ideas are limited by what I speak on and by what I do. But your programs and products and services are so varied that there is probably the sky's the limit when it comes to creative value added ideas you can bring to your post. 
your event planner. Now, once you have painted the picture of how great this event is going to be, and be sure, put a star by this, do not play hard to get. This is not the time to be like, I am the famous speaker and you'll be lucky to have me. No, you have painted yourself in this event. This event cannot go forward without you. You are so excited about this event. It is going to be the highlight of your year. Because you know what? The event planner and the audience, they deserve nothing less. Can you imagine going to an, a, a wedding planning venue, uh, sorry, a wedding venue with your stepdaughter? This is a true story. And the person who is giving you the tour of the venue, you say to that person, will you be here the day of the wedding? And they say, oh no, if I had to be here for every wedding, I would hate my life. I'm sorry, we will not be booking your venue because you will not even be employed by this place by the time of the wedding, right? Wrong attitude, right? You want the person who says, I am so excited about your wedding. Not we do 3,000 weddings a year here. You, is that absurd? I'm not going to be at your wedding. You want the person who says, yes, and if I'm not at this wedding, then I will have a second in command who will know every detail, right? That's the enthusiasm you want. And that's the enthusiasm you want to project from you are excited about this event. Now, granted, you are busy, and so you will need a deposit to hold the date. So don't worry about that. But right now, it is the time to now transition from this is going to be a great event. You're already talking about it as if you're there. Not if you hire me, this is going to be a great event. You are already there. See it? You're already in the picture. Okay. Now you get to talk about fees. Now, if they say to you, what would be your fees? The best response is, tell me what's in your budget. Now, you don't always get this opportunity. They might say, well, it's really important that I go back to my boss with a dollar amount. And I would suggest that unless you are funded by a larger organization, so for example, you are a spokesperson for a company and they pay your full salary and you literally don't need to make a single dollar from this event, but if so, why are you here at this presentation about making dollars from your speaking. But if someone else is paying your fee, then we don't have to talk about this. But anything else, say whatever you think is twice as much as what you think you could comfortably walk away with. In fact, if you could pull it off, you have the cojones, I suggest you add a zero to whatever you think. I'm not kidding. And at the end, hello, not the beginning at the end, a zero to whatever you think you should state for your fee. Because we, as women, I'm a dietitian. I wrote the book. It's not just for dietitians, but I wrote it from the dietitian's point of view. We are caregivers. We are health professionals. We want to donate. We want to give. Everyone here is a giving person. There was not a single service up there that, that you just sit at home and do yourself. You do this service with and for other people. So what's in their budget is a really tough question for you to guess. And so if you have to say an amount, say something much higher than what you think you deserve, because that way there's always room for negotiation and you <coughs> don't leave money on the table. Now, what is the fear? The fear is if I say a number too high, they will walk away. And let me reassure you, you are the key to a successful event. Remember, you painted yourself into the picture. They will not walk away if they cannot afford your fee. They will negotiate. It is a normal part of business transactions that we are generally not taught in school. We sometimes can even think, I don't want to hurt anyone's feeling. I don't want to be gender because there's probably people of other genders besides women that don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, I hope. But negotiating is not hurting feelings. You have to do whatever you have to do to be able to state a fee or you are not a business person, you are a volunteer, which by the way is a-okay. But you have to be able to pre present a number if you are asked. And so don't come up with this number in advance. Think about all the things you have offered. And so if you have to, you can say, let me crunch the numbers and get back to you. What's in your budget? Oh, it sounds like a commercial. What's in your wallet? So, <laughs> right? Exactly. So crunch, you can say, I need a little time to crunch the numbers. I need to figure out what the plane fare is to your location. I need to figure out how many days I would be out of the office and I will get back to you. So if you have to, you can buy some time, but you want to craft a fee based on what you have pitched, not just a, a number out of the air. Although, you know what? 
I take that back. It could be a number out of thin air. But ideally, if you pick a number out of thin air, I'm thinking you're going to aim low. So you might need to buy a little time and that's okay. You don't have to have a number right then because that you're going to think, but it's not professional to not have a fee. Wrong. It's very professional to customize your fee based on the custom presentation that you have just prepared them to receive. So first answer is tell me what's in your budget. If they say, I really need a number to take back to the, the higher up muckety mucks, you say, uh, let me get back to you. I need to crunch the numbers. Okay. If you like what's offered, if they say, well, what's in our budget is $10,000 and you say, that is a fantastic. Then you say, okay. <laughs> if they say, well, we have $2, then it's okay to say no, but I wouldn't suggest it. Um, but let's say it's something in the middle. Let's say that you're offered $1,000. $10,000 would have been a dream. $5,000 would have been a definite yes. They offer $1,000. Just picking numbers out of hat. Then you negotiate away some of your added value. You say, well, my usual speaking fee for this, what we've talked about, would be $10,000. For $1,000, I could do just the presentation we'd have to 86 the book signing and the VIP event, and you're making it very, very sad. All the things that the event planner can't have because they only have $1,000. Because you know what? There may be other cost centers that they can pull from. There may be other organizations that can join in. All this is in the book. There may be other ways to bring that dollar figure up but you have to motivate the event planner to bring the dollar figure up by all the sad things that they're not going to have. And you can't do that unless you have already painted yourself into the picture with tons of added value. I see nodding, so I feel like everyone's with me. If you have questions, remember, just raise your hand or probably not shout them out just so two people don't shout them out at the same time. Um, but if you like what's offered, hooray. If it's something lower that's not a definite no, negotiate, negotiate, say, hmm, that's interesting. You know, for a thousand dollars, what we could do is I couldn't come to your location, but I could do it on Zoom. That's a great, right? For you to put together a presentation, give it from your own home office. And then five minutes later, you could go eat lunch in your own kitchen, right? Voila, I could do that for a thousand dollars, right? So have a few little ideas for what maybe you could do differently. Or you can even say $1,000. You know what? Let me crunch the numbers and get back to you and see what I could do for $1,000. Meanwhile, will you talk to the decision makers and see if they can claw back some money from other areas? Maybe there's some leftover education money. Maybe there's an extra line item where you could buy my books. Let's figure out how we could bring more money into the pot so we can do all those amazing things that we wanted to do. What if there's no budget? What if it's $2 or... Well, we usually give our speakers a Starbucks card, <laughs> which often happens. Um, for example, with this presentation, we had this whole conversation and it turns out there is no budget. I think that the way it turned out because there is no budget is that I may have asked, is this usually given on a volunteer basis? That's a kind way of saying, we haven't talked about money and I'm starting to think maybe there is none. So you just say, okay, so is this presentation something that's usually done on a volunteer basis? It's just a kind way of opening the door for the person where they don't have to say, by the way, we have no budget. We just don't really want you to donate your work. If there's no budget, there are still ways for you to make money, right? That was the second half of the title, right? How to make money from your presentations, even when you speak for free. So here's some examples. Do you have something you can sell? Can you invite a sponsor? Do they allow sponsors? A sponsor that would either pay your speaking fee in exchange perhaps for you mentioning their product or giving away their product or a sponsor that would pay the organization. And that's what I personally prefer because I don't love to be sponsored by a sponsoring organization, but it's okay if the organization seeks out a sponsor to pay for my talk. You see, it's a slight difference. And the reason I say this is just a warning. Um, always make sure if your organization has arranged a sponsor for you and maybe not mentioned it to you, just say, have you arranged a sponsor for the meeting? Because uh, I gave a talk on a certain eating disorder called orthorexia with a doctor once at a conference. 
And it was before COVID, it was in the heyday of kale, when kale was in everything, when kale was in pancakes, when kale was in soft drinks, when kale was in everything. And so we sort of bashed kale constantly. We were talking about becoming obsessed with being healthy to the point where, you know, you're just smothering yourself in kale all the time, like you're using kale toothpaste. I mean, kale was just the state <coughs> of all of our jokes. And then at the end of our presentation, after the Q&A, the host said, okay, now we're going to have a two-minute video from our sponsor. And this, it came. <laughs> no, it was raspberries. But I mean, that is way too close for comfort. Tell a girl if you're getting a sponsor for her presentation, okay, before she accidentally bashes their product. That was a learning experience. Always ask if there is a sponsor. But we're talking here about you bringing a sponsor. Do you have someone with funding? that wants to reach the same target audience as you and is willing to pay for it. In a lot of spokesperson situations, marketing people aren't allowed, let's say, into hospitals, but continuing education is allowed into hospitals. And so you bring the continuing education, your sponsor brings their marketing materials, and voila, that sponsor just had a great opportunity to market to people that they could never have marketed to without you. So is there a sponsor and are they aligned with your message? I think that sort of goes without saying, but you know, I, will, I, I can think of some examples of the things that people do in this environment. And you know, I, I don't wanna bash anyone else's business, but let's just say if there is a company who does something that you object to, they would not be a good sponsor for your child. Okay, what about a paid event while you're in town? If you flew to Denton to give this presentation, is there another audience who would be interested in either the same presentation or a different presentation that you offer? And can you pile them up? If you can get three people to pay you, you could give a presentation on a volunteer basis for this other organization. Or PS, you could just say, hey, I'm thinking about doing an, an event in your town. Why don't you invite your individuals to come to that event? Because I would be happy to comp their registration to this event, knowing that your organization doesn't have a budget. There's lots of possibilities. Can individuals be charged to come to your event? They wanted to give it for free, but if they charge everyone 10 or $5 or pay what you can, maybe there's a budget without really being a budget. What about recording your talk to sell? If all goes well, and I don't say too many embarrassing things, I have a little recording device and a microphone right here, and I am recording this talk that I will package together with the PowerPoint slides and I would be able to sell or transcribe into an article if I had a way of making money from articles. There's lots of things you can do. And once the talk is over, it's over. And yes, you can record things from home, but without a live audience, you usually don't have quite the same enthusiasm. And this recorder that I happen to have, I don't know if Radio Shack is a thing anymore, but I'm sure you could get one at Best Buy. It cost about $100 in the heyday of Radio Shack and this recording device. The only caveat is just change your batteries every time. You'll be sad to find out the battery died in the middle and you only have half a presentation. But other than that, you can have a great product to sell in the future, even if you have no product to sell at this time. Other forms of value. What are the things that they can offer you? Okay, you have no budget, but could I attend the rest of your conference? I need continuing education units for my career for my license, for my registration. Could I attend the rest of your conference for free if I gave that presentation for no budget? Uh, build your brand, right? I'm giving this presentation for $0 and I am totally fine with it for a lot of reasons and you'll see some of them next, but building your brand is one of them. More people find out about you. And then those people tell people, I gave that talk at TWU, I have another talk coming out of it. I'm a speaker, this is what I love to do. So building your brand by presenting is a thing. That is value that you get. Meet contacts and prospective clients. Can you find out in advance who else will be there? Or if you think about what Tracy said before this, we're all going to meet someone here today that is going to be a contact in some way for us in the future. We're not all going to you know, just take this opportunity and never speak to each other again. There's someone here that you're going to connect with through that email list. So that is a value for you. What about planning media interviews? If you go to another city for an event, can you or will you contact those reporters in that area that might be interested in your event? They might not be interested if you're in Dallas and you were to call a reporter in Seattle and say, I'd like you to do an article on my topic or my organization. But if you're coming to Seattle to do a presentation, now it's local news. And not only that, if the interview happens in advance, then you're actually advertising the event because they're writing about your topic 
and about the event that you're coming to Seattle for. So even if it's a school, you can offer to do interviews with their school newspaper. Just ask that they check before they publish a picture of you in their school newspaper because I have found out the hard way that I make a lot of faces during presentations and the newspaper editors love to pick out like the craziest, <laughs> you know, haka face that I'm making and put that one in the school newspaper, which of course there is no school newspaper anymore, right? It's online for the world to see. So just maybe check that you have permission to review this one if you make faces like me. Um, this says scout for sponsor. Wow, you really cannot read that. But it does say scout for sponsor. Um, if you are at some kind of trade show or event where there are companies, find out if you can connect with them. Who would be the person to talk about sponsoring? I, I know uh, dietitians that go to our national conference and don't even register for the conference. They just register for a badge for the exhibit hall. So they can meet the people that they work with all year long that they have not met in person. And so they can meet new companies to be spokespeople for. I used to have, oh, this is on the olden days, I used to have CDs of my presentations. And I would actually bring the CDs around in the exhibit hall and I would say, oh, you do a conference every summer? Here's my CDs, take a listen to my presentation style. I'd love to present at your conference. So take advantage of the other opportunities available. Don't just fly in and fly out. Think about what else you could get out of doing this um, presentation for no dollars, no budget. Anything else that you can think of is amazing. Uh, sometimes you just decide to donate your time as a volunteer. And that's what I'm doing here today and proud of it. And I would never have mentioned it in a regular presentation. I would never have said, by the way, I agreed to do this talk for free. <laughs> I'm only saying it as an example of going through my own checklist of reasons that I am happy, not just okay, because I would not want to come here and do an okay level presentation, but happy to speak for free. My criteria are things like, is this an organization I would give money to? I went to school here. So me giving a presentation is like me giving a donation. TW, you should not expect a check in the mail for me this year. This is my second presentation here this year. No check will be coming. I am donating in income, but I'm okay with that. If it's an organization that it's someone you love cares about. If it's an organization that you donate yourself to anyway, right? There's lots of reasons. You get to pick your own criteria. I pick things like, oh, you know what's funny? Is I actually have a criteria of, I don't like to wake up early on a weekend. So if this presentation were on a weekend and I had to set my alarm for 5.30, I don't know that it would have it probably would have happened, but, but it was on a weekday and I can work around that. But you develop your own criteria of reasons you will speak for free because it still has value for you, even if you're not getting paid in dollars. And there is no one right answer. It is always your choice how to spend your time. Do not let anyone bully you into speaking for free. Anyone who says, I can't believe you charge that much. I can get someone for free. Let them. And I have said that before in a kind way, I have said, you know what, if there's really no budget for someone, then you might think about calling the local dietitian organizations, I'm sorry, the local dietitian schools and seeing if there's a student who could do this presentation. That doesn't insult me, that solves everybody's problem, right? Or you could contact an eating disorder treatment facility that would probably send a speaker for free. Now it won't be me. And it won't be the quality of presentation. It'll be a canned speech that they give everywhere, but it will be free. So it's always your choice. Don't let anyone bully you. If someone is kind to you and says, unfortunately, we don't have a budget, but we really value your services and your time. And this is how we could promote you. Would that be a good fit? That's totally appropriate. I'm talking about the person who makes you feel bad for having value. That is not appropriate. It's always your choice. That covers everything I wanted to spread out to you today. I am now open for any questions that you have for me, whether in the room or online. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Let me share. And thank you for sharing your time with me, because I know your time has a lot of value. Um, can I just say, yeah. especially the first half, like I found that um, such great insight, even for sending out proposals, like how to do it and negotiate that. 
So are you submitting proposals to speak at events or conferences? I'm not, I'm not even a speaker. Oh, okay. no, it's, but I was like, oh, as I, because I, I always send out a proposal for my services gotcha. and then there's always that. Oh, oh, that's right. great. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Well, well that's great news. Yeah. So how to value yourself, not even really. Yeah, to speak. And especially right. when people come back with price, because that's where I'm like, oh, I get so uncomfortable about mm -hmm. it sometimes. So I was like, oh, these are great tips. Oh, these thank you for tips. saying that. Thank great, you. Great tips. And I like the way that you you gave us permission to value ourselves and then decide what our value to giving it away. I thought that was really important. Because I am a, I'll, oh, if it's for a dog, I'll make my farm. Just save all the dogs. You need t-shirts? Yeah, here. Don't pay me. Well, then, you know what? You have a good soft heart. And what you need is a sponsor who gets their name on the back of those shirts in exchange for that funding. That I found that very interesting. Too. Yeah. I was like, hmm. Yes. How difficult is it to find um, a sponsor and how do you not undervalue yourself when you negotiate with a sponsor? Okay, so sponsorship, I am positive, is a thousand percent different depending on your industry. What you need to find out is if an organization has even a whole department related to how they spend their charity dollars or their philanthropy dollars. It might be something you can find online under their contact us. You might be able to find an actual department, an actual name of a person. And when you call, you don't wanna say, I'm looking for sponsorship for this exact event. You can say, I'm very interested in partnering with your company. I provide this and I think we share some audiences in common. It would be great to work together. Who is the right person to talk to? So that you're not just sending a pitch to a random email address, you're waiting till you have the right person, right? The person who decides how Citibank is going to spend their philanthropy dollar. If it's something smaller than that, you can just walk into Walmart and say, can I speak with the manager, right? But if it's a, a bigger something where you can't just walk in, you would probably want to do your research first because you want to be able to have a pitch that says, I know that we are aligned. I know that your mission statement is that everyone that goes to your hotel feels valued and I have a way to help with that or whatever it is that's their message. That's not a fit for you, but I'm just saying you want to be able to pitch the whole thing through, not just here I am asking for money, but oh, you love dogs? I love dogs too. And you know what? People come to me asking for dog t-shirts all the time for free. And I really can't provide dog t-shirts to everyone for free, but you're a vet. And you know what? Every dog lover wearing a t-shirt that has your vet's name on the back, that would be great free advertising. It's only not free. It's the cost of the t-shirt, but it won't mark it up. It would be a win-win for everybody. I get to feel good about giving these people a product for free, but it was a zero net cost for me because you actually paid for it for advertising. And they have an advertising budget. Even if they don't have a charity budget, they have an advertising budget. So I think it's different for every industry, but your creative thinking is gonna help. And then the internet, I think, is probably your next best resource to really look into it because some places may require some kind of written proposal. Other things you can just do by conversing with someone. Um, if you already have a contact with someone, you know, your friends, your family, they work in an organization. I mean, you don't really want to bother them every single time you meet, but you can say, listen, I'm thinking maybe our organization needs to partner with some organizations that are for profit. You don't have to say sponsor. I think partnering is a good entry word. And you can say, I wonder if there's someone at your company that does that. And that could be a way to get in with people that you already know on, you know, on some level. So you're not a total stranger. Let's take an online question. Great. Um, so Cindy Turk wanted to know, can you offer some insight on speaking on your craft at networking industry specific events where there is zero budget, all the food florals, et cetera, are sponsored, but the event might bring future clients. Is this something we could offer for free? Absolutely. If an event could bring future clients, that's a great reason to speak for free because you're not really speaking for free, right? You're speaking for future revenue. However, keep in mind, you have to decide if that event is a place where you might meet future clients, as opposed to the speaker trying, or sorry, the event planner trying to lure you in. Because what I found is that event planners would always say, come do a table at our employee health fair. I'm sure you'll get some clients. I never once got a client from that because that's not how people found a dietitian to help them with their eating disorder. But if you said, come speak at my doctor's conference on eating disorders, that would be great. I would do that for free any minute because now I have just introduced myself and my services to 200 doctors 
who could then refer clients to me because that is how people who have eating disorders find an eating disorder dietitian. So yes, absolutely, clients, potential clients is a great reason to speak for free because it's not free, it's a value. Just be sure it's you deciding that it's a value, not, not a lure that someone is putting out there for you to come speak for free because I guarantee you'll get potential clients. Yeah, I see head shaking, we've all been there. Yeah. So we'll take another question in here. Yes. You are the best audience member, by the way. You nod and smile. And you're, like, <laughs> you're reviving. I love it. Yeah. But I was going to ask about the thing that you use for recording. Yes. What's it, like, what is it called or what is something to get? What is it called? Uh, it is called, I'm going to pull it out of my pants and I'll just read it to you. <laughs> Put some reading glasses. It is. Uh, it's called a digital voice recorder. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And then you buy the clip on microphone okay. and you get new batteries every single time. So just buy a multi pack. You have to make sure to turn both things on. And then the one that you want to get is the one you have to look. This is a visual, Kendra. Okay. You want the one that does this. Do, do, do. Nope, that's where the battery goes. That's not what you want. You want the one. Oh, sorry, here it is. The one that has a USB port. Okay. You want it to record in MP3. So you don't have to go to a video editor to change it into MP3. So you need to check the one that records in MP3 and one that has a USB port. So you just don't need an extra cable. You just plug it into your computer and then you get it on your computer and then you can do whatever you want. Okay. Thank you. Ooh, it's sweaty. Awesome. <laughs> um, so then Nikia has did a faux pas to reach out to other speakers for the event to ask their fee, past presenters. How do you scout or find a partner to collaborate with tight deadlines? Um, I have a grant that pays before September. However, I have not aligned with an organization that will match the fee and that's in alignment with the grant deliverables. Okay, so I'm going to start with the last question first. You have been given a grant. If you present somewhere before September, you can get the money from that grant as long as some organization matches that grant amount. That's what I've taken from this. That you get to have double the amount of the grant, but the, you can't get the grant money unless you get someone else to pony up the same amount as the grant. Is that what everyone understands here? Okay, that's what I'm understanding. So in that case, you lead with, I have a grant. Whatever other questions you have, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares. Start with, I have a grant. And you post that on Facebook. Whatever groups you are, professional groups. Hey, professional colleagues, I have a grant. If I speak before September, half of my fee is paid. I'm looking for an organization that wants my presentation at half price. Mm. Please send that person to me. So instead of saying you have to match the grant, say my presentation is half price because I have a grant to pay half. A worthy organization can get me for half price. And shout that to every, shout, speak that, post that <laughs> to everyone you know. And you can email interested places, interested events. Now, September soon. So a lot of conferences have planned their events long before now. So it's going to be more like your smaller group, um, maybe your Rotary or something that meets every month, your Highland Park Garden Club. Those probably are even planned for September at this point. But see if you can figure out maybe a school district if you're, you know, could present to school nurses, but you're going to have to have a very specific pitch. This is what I do. I think it would be great for your group because of X. And P.S. half of it will be paid for if we can get it scheduled before September. So pitch that first. Now I'm going to go back to the other questions because grant first. Okay. Is it a faux pas to reach out to other speakers for the event to ask their fee? I don't think so, but it depends on how you do it, right? Everything is a faux pas if you make it a faux pas, let's say. The fact that I walked up here in flip-flops and then put on my high heels, right? I'm not ashamed of it. It's, it was in the directions. I followed around, right? So it's not a faux pas. But if I stood up here and I was like, yeah, I gotta flip it off my flip flops. I'm taking time away from my presentation to buckle my sprite. That's a faux pas. So it, it depends. Anything can be a faux pas. I have done this before. I was asked to speak at a conference. I looked online. Oh, they said they had no budget. I looked online to see who had presented there before. I knew the name of one of the speakers. And the reason I felt comfortable reaching out to her is because she had spoken on speaking at a dietitian conference that I heard. And she had said, we all undervalue ourselves. And so I felt comfortable sending an email saying, 
I saw you presented last year. I was told there is no budget. I know you talked about not undervaluing ourselves as speakers, and I'm curious if there was a reason that you decided to speak for no budget or what your situation was so that I could learn from it. And I actually got a response back from her manager, never actually heard from this dietitian, which is fine because you know she's too busy adding zeros after her fee. Um, but I got a message back from the manager and said, absolutely not, they have a budget. She does not speak for free. Right. So good information. Now, did I go back to the organization and say, I happen to know that you gave this other speaker money, right? No, I didn't. But I knew it when I went into my negotiations, right? So it's not a faux pas, but you have to have a connection. You have to have a polite way of asking the question as opposed to you can't just put on Facebook, can anybody please tell me what you charge for a speaking fee, right? You have to be a little bit more <laughs> finesse worthy than that. Explain who you are. I am a service provider in your same industry. I tend to undervalue myself. I wanted to see if you'd be willing to share any tips with me of how you were able to have the confidence to ask for an appropriate fee. That would be like a mentoring question as opposed to a, you know, I'm comparison shopping around and I'm gonna, you know, underprice you by a thousand dollars so I can get the job instead of you, right? So sort of uh, from a mentoring point of view. And then the last thing, how do you scout find a partner to collaborate with tight deadlines? Oh, that was specifically related to this grant. So, um, okay, I think we're out of time. Yeah, we are out of time. So I would encourage you that if you have a question that we didn't get to, I am sure that Jessica would be more than happy to um, do that. Yes. Um, you can email her and we'll make sure that you oh, have yeah. her. Well, it's on the slide. I guess we're not, if we could get back to the slides, but I'll just tell you what it is. Um, you will email out to everyone, right? The link where they can get the slides. Okay. Yes. Well, that the slides have my email address on them. I welcome. I welcome you to contact me. The slides also have for the people who are online a discount code, a link to get the book, and a discount code to bring the price down. It's only twenty two dollars and no shipping. But if you if you take the ten dollars off, then it's just coming to you basically for free, but covering my cost of of printing it and shipping it to you. So I'm happy to do that. Um, and just make sure you get you open up the slides and it'll be on the last slide. Thank you, everybody, for all that you're doing to make the world a better place. It's really, um, really breathtaking to be in the same room with all of you and virtually. Thank you, oh, thank you so much. We yeah. have a little thank you for you. Wow, amazing. This is definitely going to be inspiring. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, great information. Yeah. Enjoy. Um, so, do you have a business card in, the, in our basket?